not without me. Good morning. And for the past few minutes, I've been telling Ryan to get up. He's that little hedgehog in the corner. Anyway, I got an interview for today, and then later on, I'm going off to the BBC building. Yeah, he's awake. He's awake. You got college in an hour, dear. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what happened today. Interview later in the BBC building for Digital Skills Network event. I'm excited. Right, I'm just off to my interview, so wish me luck, and let's hope it goes well. This is my interview clothes, that just got off. Anyway, the interview went well, like, a lot of top tips got given, I gave him my retail experience, which is really three years working at British Heart Nation, almost four years. Um, really good, I can't wait to hear back, if I don't hear back it's because someone has more experience than me who's worked in more retail fashion shops. So it's okay if you don't hear back. It's, it's good. It's good. There's more jobs out there. I just have to find one and they'll give me the job. Anyway, I'm going to eat now and then get out of these clothes soon. Change and head to the BBC to the digital event. I just can't wait. It's going to be digital skills, networking with so many people, 12 to 4. So it's going to be really exciting. Guys, I'm at the BBC building. This is my fourth time here. I've been here for a copycat show, another copycat show, which you can check out on CBBC. I was here yesterday, and now I'm here again for a digital critics event. And this is going to be a lot of people. I mean, look at this. Look how many seats there's left behind me, and behind me here. It's going to be a lot of people coming. It looks like it. I wonder who I'm going to bump into. So this is kind of my lunch. And this is what we're at. And this is my badge. And this is the other badge. Ask me about. And I would like to know more about you. You. Thank you so much for coming. We are so delighted so many of you here, this is just absolutely fantastic. Thank you to Andrew for um, hosting us and allowing us to be part of the BBC Digital Cities uh, week. This is a fantastic time for us to focus and bring attention on the needs of vulnerable young people, so I'm really pleased that we're able to be here. Um, I hope everybody's managed to get the Wi-Fi codes. Um, if not, my colleague out at the front desk can help sort you out with that. Um, so just go and see her, stick your hand up, call for help, and we'll make sure that everybody's connected, because as you will see, we have a Twitter wall. My colleague Anna is determined to win on that leaderboard, so if somebody wants to wipe her off there, <laughs> I set you the challenge. <laughs> um, so, we're not gonna have much talking from the front today. Um, this is all about you. We want you to generate ideas. We want you to share your thoughts together. Um, I'm gonna give a little bit about what the afternoon's about, what we're actually hoping to achieve from this set a bit of context for you, so why, why have we started doing work around um, vulnerable young people and digital skills? Uh, and then I'm going to share some insights for our Not Without Me projects, who've been working for the last year with different groups of vulnerable young people to start to share some of the learning from them. I won't say too much though, because we have three of our projects here, and they will be sharing with you themselves what their thoughts and observations have been about delivering digital skills work uh, with young people. Uh, we work with different kind of young people um, from all age groups, um, 8 to 11 year olds to 16 to 19 year olds and sometimes work with adults as well. Um, during this project we wanted to kind of um, work with uh, young people um, who are in care um, or on the borders of leaving care and um, how do we kind of equip those people, um, those young people with information and the right technology for their independent lives. We were really intentional through this work that we wanted to um, make the training really relevant to the young people, not just in terms of skills that they were interested in, but also in, in terms of what that means to them in their everyday life. How does that mean anything to them in terms of their engagement um, online? 
um, whether that's to do with finding employment and for a lot of the young people they were mindful of that but for a lot of the young people it was more about how can they connect with their communities with their friends and how can they use those digital skills to enhance the experience <coughs> of their lives as well um, and so the second phase was a, a range of sessions that we delivered with young people actually training them how to do these things they were very hands-on sessions the young people told us that they specifically wanted hands-on sessions they didn't want us to be talking to them because for them the whole kind of uh, experience of sitting in a classroom and being taught just made them switch off. Um, so it's really important that we deliver that for them. Um, and that they wanted the sessions also to be as much as possible centred around them uh, and their needs and not that assumption of what we thought they needed. Up with um, a new project idea to address an existing challenge or an existing issue surrounding uh, vulnerable young people and their digital inclusion. So just, uh, just out of interest, because I know that there's quite a substantial amount of people, um, so you may not have been able to get the chance to introduce yourself <coughs> to everyone. So hands up, who works kind of directly with young people or in practice um, and have experience of working with young people? So quite, quite a mix. Okay. And who would say they are from uh, more of the research or policy um, or kind of that kind of context? So we've got a few, there's a, there's a cluster over here, there's a few, there's a few people that uh, move there. Uh, and finally, who comes from a creative or media uh, background? So again, we have a few dotted. The person holding the camera is the one from the media. <laughs> Hello. So what we'd really like you to do for the next 60 minutes is to break off into small groups. We've got loads of other tables dotted around the place, uh, or there's the seats, or you can come on the stage and work together in groups of about six to come up with a project idea. It can be really out there. It doesn't have to be something that you think that you would want to work on. It could just be a solution that you think might actually, might actually work. We're really interested in coming up with some really different ideas, hopefully making some really interesting new partnerships between people in the room. Um, again, we won't be doing a formal feedback session, uh, so don't worry about having to do a five minute spiel. <laughs> Gina's also handily holding up what we have also nicknamed our butt bin. These are for all the comments where someone says something and you go, oh yeah, that's a really good idea, but uh, what about this? For this session, we're going to put those in the bin. For all the ideas, it's, yeah, okay, I agree with you, but um, we'd like all of those to be parked in our butt bin, which will be, well, there's a few that will be located around the place. So this session is meant to be as open um, as, as you can kind of think of. Um, ah, so cool! It's me! And our idea is just around here. A clues website of Danger Facts. All by us. You're gonna wave, guys? <laughs> Yes, the digital sandbox. Let's look at all the great ideas for young people by all of us. Of course, start with our group. The best. <laughs> Close websites, but digital facts. Online certificate for skills. So that's what says here. A cool phone. I think it's for. Our idea is about identity and about that being a key thing for young people to explore their own identity within a, a safe environment in order to build their own resilience and to be able to make better decisions for themselves in terms of what they want to do, how they want to keep themselves safe etc. So that's the basic idea here. So us on Twitter. A web analyzing impact about social media and scenes. Anyway, they're just all drafts. We'll hear what all the ideas are in a moment on the various stage of joining you. Hey guys, my team have thought about a danger website. So, on the right side. Digital sandbox, so this is what we thought about. And it's basically just ideas on the website teach you about danger, tips, goals, and opportunities you can just find. 
within filming, audio, social media, cyber, music, and just other things on IT. I mean, we create and brainstorm so many ideas. I just want to get this out because there's more danger. We do not know online and copyrights. And I just want to get all of them out there. And I just think this would be a great idea. A closed app where you can just find the dangers and just earn badges to know the goals about digital stuff. So I think this is a great website. We just brainstorm all together. And my team should just lift your hands. <laughs> great team. <laughs> Thank you. And driving inclusion, but also looking at how we put inclusion at the heart of digital is that two-way conversation that's not, not without me seems to be all about. And I've tried to pull that into four headings, I suppose, today. And just by chance, they happen to all start with E. <laughs> what you say? Never... <laughs> and the first one that came out, the first working group that I sat at the table, was earlier. We have to do this much earlier. Now, we're better than ever. But we have to do this much earlier. I think we often consistently underestimate what young people can achieve. When is it just going to stop being surprising that young people can do good things and achieve well and speak with authority and have wise reflections? Wisdom often doesn't come with the age of life, it comes with your stage of life. I know 15 year olds have been through a lifetime of stuff already and if we learn to treat that with respect and not patronise them, the power that that can yield is amazing. Who ever got told you speak when you're spoken to? as a child. You respect your elders. Who ever got told children should be seen and not heard? Or up until just a decade ago, across the whole of the UK, we would call young people NEETS. Does anyone know what that stands for? What does the N stand for? Not. not. So we are raising a new generation on what they are not. Tell me any business that creates success by being not something. <laughs> I mean, any agency who gets out there and creates a great reputation on telling people what they're bad at. Yet it seems to be okay from a policy perspective for young people. It's a deficit model. So what digital has the potential to do from this moment on is to focus on what we are, what young people can do, what they are capable of doing. And the interesting irony is while adults are the people that will solve a lot of these issues and help open the door and create that platform, do we ever also ask ourselves, how much should be the barrier? What are our own adult-based, already out-of-date assumptions that are different paradigms from that of today's generation? On what we think is cool on social media, on how we think young people see themselves, on what their aspirations are going to be in five years. There's a stat that jumped out at me that is one in three young people feel more able to be themselves online. That says a huge amount that a third of young people want to use that gateway through their phone or their computer to express their identity. So that for me is a really clear call to action and that is the gap we have to start to work. Because if they feel like they need that to express themselves, I think the risk of uh, negative behaviours, of desperation, of clinging on for dear life mentality while online starts to make them very vulnerable emotionally to a whole lot of other unsavory things that we don't want to see happen. So getting in earlier is critical. That first B, a prevention, stopping things from happening, not just firefighting after it's occurred, that early intervention, intervention stuff in primary schools, not just high schools, permeating that across the piece. The second E is embedded that come out of one of the discussion groups I heard as well. And that idea of, um, I don't know if you had it, but I remember you do IT or ICT at school. And I used to hate the class because that teacher was a bit weird, smelt funny. And if he told me to click, then drag, and how to put a nice colourful line around the text box or how to make the turtle move, and it's just like, oh, this is, this is cringeworthy. It was just dire, it was like, no way. And I judged everything to do with technology or computers by that old codger in that classroom. Um, and so I just didn't bother, I didn't bother. Um, it needs to be different, it needs to be more embedded. And right now in Scotland we have the curriculum for excellence. I'm certainly for the time being, <laughs> by the sense of where the conversation in the political world is going. And digital citizenship exists in one wee subsection under global citizenship and one wee element of the capacities. That needs to be right across the piece. That needs to be at the heart of everything we're doing. Digital is not an end in itself or a separate subject. It needs to also be the mechanism and the toolbox and the toolkit we use to push everything out. And that is starting. We're using digital and online stuff, and I know we're using it, looking at additional learning using iPads and, 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 and apps and learning tools. But again, that needs to start to become the real norm. 
That needs to stop being exceptional, and it needs to stop being um, new. The third D is engaging. We need to start to be engaging. Let's think of ourselves like a media output organisation. One doesn't really spring to mind. Um, but your whole focus, who hears from the BBC? Um, and imagine you say you want to be um, consumer-led. You want to understand what the viewers want, and you want to produce that. You want to be agile, fleet of foot, not ideological. You'll be reactive, and you're creating content that's a hit. Although Saturday morning suggests other things. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. So how do we start to do that in the wider education sphere? That's kind of that. How do we be engaging? It can't just be the one teacher who's dropped computing or that old traditional ICT stuff for 30 years who's rolling that out again. It starts to create a negative, a negative vibe. And I think it's not proven, but in my instinct is from experience, maybe it's better to have no engagement between top digital than to have a bad one because you actually actively turn off it as opposed to just not know about it. So how do we make that engaging? How does it start to be targeted? We engage the right people. There's a phrase that only a man who has a, the number X and L in his clothing size will understand. One size doesn't fit most. <laughs> or one size if it doesn't fit all. I find that one size fails most. So how do we start to look at a far more bespoke, reactive, targeted approach to work with what we're calling excluded young people, hard to reach, vulnerable groups? I've heard a few different phrases which we can take exception with them all if we choose to. But I think it was Steph from um, Signal Media who, who was talking about some of the target groups and who we define as vulnerable young people. I started off as the automatic people joining your, your service with boys. So it became very clear that a bit like STEM education, there was a bit perhaps a, a, an image barrier for getting girls involved in what was branded digital. Then you were speaking about uh, young care leavers, young people leaving the care system. But then it started to change and become those those perhaps at risk of, of, of struggling in the care system um, and it started to go much broader than that. So we need to think about what kind of groups that's looking like and I think how Carnegie can get some real good examples because some things we're going to sacrifice the good for the perfect. Let's understand some real starting points, get some wins under our belt and expand from there. Otherwise, somebody will put up an idea for you go, yeah, but that doesn't work with young offenders or no, that doesn't work with the, the hard of hearing and nothing ever happens. And then my third E, that's to be exciting. Yes, it's serious, but it should be daft. It should be stupid, it should be fun. It should be engaging, it should be challenging. It should be shocking. It needs to be interactive. Any youth worker or teacher should know that. It needs to be experiential. You learn by doing it. If I tell you, you'll forget. If I show you, you might remember. If I involve you, you'll understand. Well, as I just said, to say thank you very much to everybody for coming and participating, and it's been a great day. Thank you very much. Hashtag not without me. I'm just about to leave soon. This is Anne, and I want to thank her, thank her for letting me vlog today because it's not every day you get to vlog in the BBC. So thank you, Anne. Uh, no, 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 no worries. Thank you, thank you for coming. I uh, hope you enjoyed the day, and I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, seeing the rest of the vlogs and seeing uh, what you come up with with your digital sample. And also, where else can we find about hashtag not without me? So yeah, hashtag not without me on uh, on Twitter. You can follow us. Uh, uh, at the Carnegie UK Trust, or you can follow me at Anna underscore Carnegie, um, or any of the, anyone else that's kind of come along today. But yeah, hashtag not without me. It, uh, you got place that. to go. <laughs> Search anything. Hashtag, hashtag not, not without me. That's it. But one, two, three. Hashtag not without me. We finished at the BBC Scotland building. I can take this with me, and I can take this bag with me with stuff in it and the website plan that's inside it too. Anyway, off oh, now. Thank you for the event. Hi. BBC? Oh, yeah. Not the end of this vlog yet. <laughs> There's okay. Jennifer! That must be social justice. <laughs> okay, you're just too fast! We went in a taxi! That makes me feel really good to actually, like, I feel like one of those speedy, like, like, <laughs> very important it, Bradley Wiggins? You got a Bolt bike! That's Bolt! <laughs> Bradley Wiggins. Um, <laughs> I've ever bought anything in my life. Is he in here? Is he? Yeah. Yeah. He's just paying a taxi. We've been talking a lot about a uh, PhD research and politics and stuff. We've also been drinking a lot of tenants. So yeah, I think the uh, overall like afternoon and the evening was really interesting and. I think 
doing things like these, you get quite a lot of um, positive energy from people who are passionate about the similar things that you like and your life. And, and I think talking about social equality and how perhaps digital tools could help with that was really interesting. And, and you know, it's always very refreshing when you're exchanging ideas with other people who are doing similar things but not necessarily the same. I think that also these events bring together people and then we have to go back into our communities and we to, to take what we've learned and go out and actually like yeah. preach what we talk about. We got to share this digital stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We got to share this digital stuff. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. And also like just it's it's a thing about dialogue. Like beyond technology is dialogue. So finding the points because tonight I've, I've only met you tonight. It's just like yeah. finding reasons to keep talking to people is really important. Like, and I think it was really in, uh, important to have you there because it was the, the event was all about you know how young people perceive and adapt to digital technologies and you you're you're definitely young you are younger than Aww. us oh yeah hey. look at the view. so so you were you were younger than us yeah that's for sure yeah maybe you're not gonna, mentally but yeah you're gonna come on our podcast right? yeah so yeah. having you there was I think it was very important and some other young people there as well but for, for me sometimes it felt like yeah we're all adults there talking about how to make digital uh, technologies accessible to you know young people, people. Yeah. We, we do we're, this young stuff. people in there so we do this all we do this stuff all the time and we work with young people and I'm always that frustration about how young people are there to talk about it but I also have to what we have to realise is actually there's people making decisions above us that we we are out of control. So I think yeah. people are doing great things, right? Yeah. And we keep doing great things and I'm not gonna accept the blame for things that people above us are doing so yeah. and, and, and I think that we need to keep fighting because for young people are the next generation. Yes. And actually yeah. if we don't support them then we are literally living the same And we are fault. What? Yeah. We are full, yeah. we just yeah. leave them. Well, and it's so inspiring to actually you seeing you being super involved and actually covering these events yeah. and interviewing us. It's like you, we really need people like you to, to get involved and to like share their views and I mean it's gonna be meta. Yeah, and just be <laughs> Being engaged and involved, you know, because if you think about it, when I was 20, there was no, I mean, that was maybe 10 years ago. Okay, it was 10 I, years We ago. were the only, like, certainly myself, I was the only person in my in my community that was online. And I was online, but there was I met a lot of basic. friends. Yeah, I just okay. like networking, that's why I used to do this a lot. Yeah. No, I just like, yeah, exactly. I like people, I like dialogue, I like doing stuff. <laughs> anyway, let's finish this. Yeah, so I'm done. Yeah. And I'm gonna head soon, but I've had a great time meeting Jennifer and. I your name. Yeah, that's fine, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we are! We are like, yes. Yeah. She's, she's the East Coast version of me. Polish. Yeah. But she's Polish. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm always. I can put in there. As, as, a, as, a, as, 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 as a filmmaker, and as a filmmaker, we know this. We're gonna watch this and be like, you are the next BBC. That's why I'm not looking into yeah. them. Pretty is not there. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, turn it off. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Stay open. That's you back from the pub. It was really good actually, like not going back to Paisley after the event. Just going straight to the pub with the guys and just networking. I'm so glad I met someone who I can collaborate with in the future, Jennifer. I can't wait to collaborate with her very soon. I'm so glad I got to meet um, Ian who's given me so much advice and feedback myself. I like how he said like I give young people a license to just be themselves. Like if I'm filming and they just want to be themselves and don't want to be a part of it, I totally understand. I like that I got to speak to somebody about my issues. I wish someone didn't have to interrupt me right now, but anyway, I'm just so help, so glad that I got to speak to people after the event. And we were just talking about a bunch of things like uh, social media justice, um, your generation, your tech, um, just helpful stuff. And I just glad I went. Anyway, there's a train coming, it's gonna be noisy soon. I'm gonna head and see Ryan. It's a train coming. Okay, I'm almost finished up the vlog with this last clip, but um, just been talking with my boyfriend Ryan. Just think about the website.
think we're gonna do it. Um, anyway, it's been a good day. If I've confused anybody, what's been happening today, just search hashtag not without me and then you'll be unconfused what's been going on in this vlog. And yeah, it's been a good day. I mean, glad I've networked with a lot of people. I love networking. Anyway, I'm gonna head to bed now. Because it's like, what time is it? Half past nine. Thank you. I'm gonna head to bed. Or we'll watch something, because I see Ryan is now on Now TV. Bye! Thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. This has been Danger Devs, the upset danger.